Have you ever wondered how websites and apps make sure the right person or system is accessing the right data? Why you can log into the email from your phone but not from somewhere else? That's all thanks to API authentication. In this video, we'll break down the most common methods. Basic Auth, API Keys, HMAC, and JWT with Auth 2.0. You'll learn how each one works, how to validate it, the pros and cons, and when to use them. Stick around to the end for a quick cheat sheet that will help you pick the right method for your next project. Let's start with the basics. Basic Auth, that is. Basic Auth is the simplest method. The client sends a username and password with every request, usually encoded in Base64 inside the authorization header. The server decodes it and checks the credentials. To authenticate an API call, you normally separate username and password with a column and Base64 encode them. Once encoded, you prepend word basic and put it in the authorization HTTP header. When API receives the request, it compares username and password to what is stored in the database. If they match, the request is allowed. The pros of the basic auth is that it is super easy to implement and it provides information about the user. The cons include the fact that user credentials are sent with every request, so without HTTPS, it's not secure. And that it is hard to revoke or rotate credentials without affecting the user directly. When to use it? I should say never. But if you are an API consumer and API is using basic auth, you don't have a choice. And trust me, there are still APIs out there that use basic auth. When you have to use such APIs, please be extremely careful when storing user credentials needed for authentication. To solve the issue of rotating credentials that basic auth has, you can use API key authentication. An API key is a long random string that identifies the client. It's usually sent in a header like X API key or as a query parameter. Obviously, sending an API key as a query parameter is not very secure and you should avoid doing so. Always use the header. The server looks up the API key in its database or config and checks if it's active and what permissions it has. If valid, the request is processed. The pros of API key authentication method include the fact that it is easy to issue and rotate without changing username or passwords. And it lets you track and throttle usage per client. The cons are API keys are essentially shared secrets. If leaked, anyone can use them. API key authentication method can be used for server-to-server -server communication, public APIs where you just need to track usage or when you don't need full user authentication. If you are building a public API, normally you will need to provide a section in an admin dashboard for a user where they can create an API key and assign permissions to it. You store the key and attribute it to that user. You also need to provide a way for a user to delete the key in case it gets compromised or the user wants to rotate it. The common point of weakness that both basic auth and API keys have is that they are transmitted during requests so they can be intercepted. There is a way, however, not to transmit credentials or the key when authenticating to an API. It's called HMAC or hash-based message authentication code. HMAC authentication adds integrity to your requests. Both client and server share a secret key. For each request, the client compares a signature or a hash to the request data and timestamp using the secret key. It sends the signature along with the request. The server recomputes the HMAC signature using the same algorithm and key. If the signature matches and the timestamp is within a valid window, let's say 5 minutes, the request is accepted. Couple of things to note. If it's a GET request, you can create an HMAC signature from an empty string or an HTTP method, path, and query parameters. If it's a POST request, you hash the body of the request. Also, it is important to remember to get a raw body of the request when validating HMAC signature on the receiving end. Certain frameworks middleware that are used to parse the body of the request may change spacing or add line breaks. In case of Express.js framework, rather than using rec.body, you should save raw body to rec raw body before parsing the request. The pros of HMAC method include the fact that the secret key is stored securely by both the client and the server and is never 
sent over the wire, eliminating possibility of interception. Also, HMAC prevents request tampering if it is intercepted because the signature covers the entire request and won't match if the request is changed. The cons are that HMAC authentication method is more complex to implement compared to other methods and that both sides must handle clock skew and keep secrets safe. HMAC authentication is used for high security APIs where data integrity matters like payment processors or webhooks. I also like to use it for internal API communications where I have control over both client and server. HMAC authentication is super secure, but it doesn't convey any user information. Then the question is, can we send user information to the API and not suffer greatly if the token or API key is intercepted? The answer to it is JWT or JSON Web Token and OAuth 2.0 standard. A JWT is a signed JSON object containing claims like user ID, scopes, and expiration. The client includes this token in the authorization header as a bearer token. The API server checks the signature of the JWT using a public key or shared secret. It verifies that it's not expired and that it has the right scopes. No database lookup is needed for each request if you trust the signature. So the API server's job is kind of easy. Validate the token and return data according to the scopes or permissions. But how does the client obtain the JWT in the first place? Or what happens when the token expires? This is where Auth 2.0 comes into play. A user or a client first authenticates with an authorization server and gets a token. The authorization server will issue access refresh and in some cases ID tokens. The client can then use access token to make API calls. Access token is short-lived, from a few minutes to a few hours. If it is intercepted by the time the hacker gets around to hacking, it will expire and be no good. Or if a leak is detected, the user have an option to revoke access token. Refresh token is long-lived from a few days to a few years and is used to request another access token without user involvement. Creating an authentication server or implementing it within your API is actually hard. However, there are many services out there like Auth0 or Cognito that can handle authentication side of the things for you. And they are pretty much free if you don't have a lot of users. The pros of JWT authentication are that it scales well because you don't need to store session state on the server, works across multiple services thanks to the signature verification, supports fine-grained permissions and delegated access via Auth scopes. The cons are that the implementation is more complex than API keys or basic auth. And if the token is leaked, you still have a short danger window until the token expires. JWT with auth 2.0 is ideal for modern apps where users log in and access multiple APIs or microservices or where the third-party apps need delegated access. So to wrap up, here is a quick cheat sheet. Basic auth use only for simple internal or test scenarios with HTTPS. Don't use it in production. API keys, easy way to identify clients or apps, good for usage tracking. HMAC, when you need message integrity and temper protection, use it with the webhooks. JWT and OAuth 2.0, when you need scalable, secure user level authentication and authorization. I hope you found this breakdown helpful and now understand how API authentication works. And if you are ready to take your API building skills to the next level, check out my video Node.js REST API Mastery – Build Powerful APIs with Express. It's the perfect follow-up to this one and will show you how to build and secure real APIs from scratch.